The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. On today's Stop Animal Cruelty, the second in a three-part series, we feature further excerpts from the award-winning documentary, Skin Trade, which reveals the horrendous truth about the fur industry. The film's important message is bolstered by the appearance of an array of prominent fashion designers, celebrities, and government dignitaries in the documentary. They include, among others, U.S. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Academy Award-nominated vegan actor James Cromwell, and four-time U.S. National Basketball Association champion and vegan John Sally. Skin Trade was directed by Shannon Keith, a vegan animal rights attorney from the U.S. and founder of the nonprofit animal welfare organization Animal Rescue Media and Education. Ms. Keith represents animal rights activists and organizations. Her clientele include Shark, or Showing Animals Respect and Kindness, the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, and others. She is also the founder of Uncaged Films, a film production company that released the award-winning documentary Behind the Mask, a history of the animal liberation movement in 2006 and Skin Trade in 2010. Fur is one of those things that there's just no argument for. Fur for vanity, and that's ridiculous. It should be gone and over with by now. I made Skin Trade so that people can see what goes on, how animals are killed for fur, and how they can make a change and stop the brutal fur and fashion industries. We now present more excerpts from Skin Trade. One of the most common misconceptions we hear when we're out in front of stores educating the public about animals killed for fur is this idea that animals are euthanized, that there's not a lot of suffering involved. I just assume it, it grows its hair back and it's all okay at the end of the situation. <laughs> That's what you assume? <laughs> I'm assuming that. Well, have I got a surprise for you. Pick up my knife again, but I'm gonna do some pulling. Put my fingers through the leg holes front leg holes and start pulling. Yeah, I get those ears to come out like that right there. You can see the ear here. They imagine that these animals are killed in the same way that their pet might be put to sleep when a pet is very ill. That they're simply given a shot and they go to sleep and it's a relatively painless existence. So when we get this, I'm safe to go home and tell my mom. Yeah, she can't come to double. It's not cruel. No, They're not no, breaking no, necks not. or stomping on them. No, I mean that's cruel. I mean, it's like no, no, no. Do they break the animals' necks on the fur farm? No, no. I mean that that animal has very sharp teeth, very sharp nails. They wouldn't do it. You're not gonna get your mouth on me, little girl. I'm sorry. If they break the necks, it would damage the fur. No breaking of the necks. Do they break the necks of the animals to no. kill them? Have they ever yeah, done that? Yeah. No, because they can, if they can wound the fur, too, if they do that. This prompted this initiative in Beverly Hills to put on every single fur coat and every fur product this animal was killed by gassing, trapping, anal genital electrocution. I don't think fur is fashionable at all. I think it's hideous. To be honest, I think it looks very dated. I don't know why you would want to wear that look. It is complete cruelty. You just, there's nothing fashionable, beautiful, nothing about cruelty. To me, it just seemed wrong to kill something for vanity. And that's what fur is about in modern times. It's not about staying warm. My wife was my girlfriend at the time. I bought her this big fur coat, and got pictures in it, and 
And I was like, she was like, wow, look at that fur. I go, all this time you spend not looking fat. <laughs> then you put a fur on and you look like the animal. And I said, that makes no sense. You go, oh, but I'm warm. I go, you warm without fur. And we got rid of it. We got out of it. If I'm walking down the street and I see somebody wearing fur, I immediately look at them in disgust. It doesn't look good to me, it doesn't look cool. I just think like, wow, what kind of human being wears fur? It's all about power. And wearing a fur garment says that you have power, literally, over the animal that the coat is made out of and over the rest of the people that potentially can't afford to buy what you have. The fur business is really a form of kidnapping, controlling, it's a control issue. <laughs> Because it is theft. I don't care what you call it, it, it is theft. And uh, when you look at it that way, then people have to make a moral choice. It has really more to do with sort of the, the, the psychology of the person wearing it than any sort of reality in, uh, in terms of need or necessity. When I started this clothing line, and at first it was like a hip-hop line, and then I made it more mainstream, American style, uh, as I call it, mid-American style. And then I started realizing we didn't need leather. We also didn't need fur. As consumers, we are the most powerful block against the fur trade. It's really important to have that, you know, that affirmation that, you know, if you are anti-fur for ethical reasons, you're not crazy. Like, this is a legitimate thing that's happening, and it's a terrible thing that's happening, and it has to be stopped. And it won't be stopped until these people who create the, the demand for, uh, for garments um, really take a stand on it. Stop Animal Cruelty will return after this brief message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. The images in the following program are highly sensitive and may be as disturbing to viewers as they were to us. However, we have to show the truth about animal cruelty. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television, featuring excerpts from Shannon Keith's documentary, Skin Trade. We now continue with more from this award-winning film. If you know what is behind an animal fur coat, you will want no part of it. Well, of course, one of my favorite fashion designers was Todd Oldham because I knew that he never would design fur. I never wanted to involve animals in what I did with design, and then I personally don't wear leather or any animal products. He's a perfect example of somebody who, who could convey incredible glamour and luxury and elegance um, in women's clothing without a scrap of cruelty involved. The more I became aware of it, the more I was able to write my life for what is meaningful for me, and it feels really nice to know I'm not harming, harming other critters. People, I bet, wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. So when you have that as an option, it makes it even more absurd to, to go the or sad dead animal root. You don't have to have that dead animal to make you look better. You can have this fabric to make you look better. If you tell somebody, I think you're cute, but you just wasted $7,000 on something that's not cute. It was cute before it got on your back. That mink is a cute little animal. That fox is beautiful. On the fox, on the mink. This is a great example of the technology that exists today in fake fur. This fabric is fluid enough to ruffle and be very beautiful, at the same time be a really nice soft coat and has a great touch. It's imitating a sheared mink. Lab tests have shown that animal fur and fake fur, if they have the same length of pile, they have the same R value or they retain heat at the same rate. So, no, that's not true. Fake fur can be just as warm as animal fur. There are some wonderful designers out there who set a good example, who would never use fur in their collections. I believe that people can 
do well by doing good. From Mark Bauer, whose designs are phenomenal. Technology today has advanced to such incredible levels that there is no need for, you know, cruel fashion. Fashion is painful enough as it is without having, you know, animals killed needlessly for the sake of vanity. As are Stella McCartney's, Polo Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein, Todd Oldham. Wonderful, wonderful people who care about animals and care about fashion. My point of view did, did cause problems for me in the industry. I wouldn't have changed anything because I would have felt much worse if I was, you know, doing furs or involving myself in these cruelty pipelines at the expense of being accepted by a magazine editor. I mean, that would be, I would, well, well, you'd be nothing if you chose something like that. In the case of Ralph Lauren, uh, I think they absolutely thought they were not going to give up fur ever. And when our office sat down with them and showed them the footage that they didn't want to see, then Ralph Lauren's people said, all right, we can't be party to this. And the same was true with Calvin Klein. Uh, Calvin Klein came close to tears when we actually got him to see the footage of the animals strangling, the animals drowning. Right now, Overstock.com is completely fur free. When we're offered fur products, we pass. Let's cancel every order we can cancel. We've let all of our vendors know that Overstock.com does not sell fur in any way, shape, or form. To support that is a message that every consumer can give to the, to the fur trade saying, hey, you know what? People can make money by not selling fur. Well, we're also now with raccoons. There's too many raccoons. They're running rabbits. Uh, really? The, uh, the uh, raccoons in, in Jersey and Pennsylvania, oh, right? Just how do they eventually kill them when they kill them? Injections. All across the media were splashed these stories about how animals were killed for fur. <laughs> Fur activists you can see more fur in Germany than fur. We can see more fur in Germany than fur. Fifty people took pictures. Right outside the Neiman Marcus store. This isn't an activist myth. This isn't an urban legend. This is what happens. It's real. It's actually happening. May the horrific fur industry quickly end as we all quickly transition to an organic vegan lifestyle free of animal products and see the innumerable blessings our world gains through the practice of life-affirming ways. Our heartfelt appreciation, Shannon Keith, and all others involved in the production of Skin Trade for graciously allowing us to broadcast your documentary across the globe. The final part of our three-part presentation of Skin Trade is next Tuesday on Stop Animal Cruelty. For more details on Skin Trade, please visit www.skintradethemovie.com. The Skin Trade DVD is available at the same website. For more information on animal rescue, media, and education, please visit www.arme.tv. Thank you for joining us on today's program. Enlightening Entertainment is up next. After noteworthy news, may heaven grace all beings with bountiful peace and fulfillment. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.